Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, back with another Spirit Series video. Uh, today we're going to wrap up the tequila section by talking about Añejo tequilas. Uh, Añejo tequila is any tequila aged more than one year and uh, less than three years. Now for a long time it was just any tequila aged over one year, but 2006 the, the regulatory body in Mexico decided they're going to add a new category extra añejo, extra añejo tequilas, or any tequilas aged three years or more. So, um, if you're old school, you just remember there was Blanco, Rosado, and Añejo. As of 2006, we have extra añejo. Uh, extra añejo, the category was kind of brought up as a way for tequila to kind of uh, match scotches and whiskeys, uh, especially scotches that you have. 15, 18, 21, 25 year old scotches and uh, those products seem super premium um, they were pushing the category further and tequila decided hey we're going to age a little bit longer we're going to push the boundaries as far as uh, time spent in the barrel. Uh, one thing we have to remember and you may be thinking well why don't we do 10 year tequilas, 12 year, 15 year tequilas we have to remember that our source for tequila is the agave plant and that the agave plant takes five to nine years to harvest. Um, the difference is, is think about we're making a batch of bourbon. Uh, it's corn based, we may add some barley, some rye. Well the reality is there's barley, rye, and corn available all the time 24-7. Even though those crops only get harvested once a year, you could throw them in a grain storage bed They'll, they'll stay for a long time, uh, maintain the quality, and again, they're grown all the time everywhere. You can today get some grain, ferment it within a few days, and then you're ready to throw it in the still, then you throw it in the barrel, and within a few years, you can have aged bourbon, and you, you can have something that qualifies for straight bourbon or straight whiskey status. Where at that same time period, with tequila, you still have that agave plant in the field. You're still a year or two away from harvest. Even. You haven't even harvested yet, low on, ferment it, distill it, and then bottle it. So there is, there is a difference there. Um, there's more time up front and less time in the barrel compared to vice versa with bourbon. Not a lot of time before it gets in the barrel, more time in the barrel. Uh, also too, we have to remember additional time equals additional cost. Um, I don't doubt there's some 10 and 12 year old tequilas out there. You're going to pay for it. Just, just trust me on that. Uh, also, too, we got to remember, and again, the source for tequila is agave. And when we harvest that piña, it's, it's fruit. And that means the sugars inside are fructose, which are similar to the sugars in the production of brandy, coming from wine, grapes. Or whatever, and the long, a lot of people say, and this is something I've noticed, and is that the longer you age tequila, the more brandy-like qualities you get, that it interacts with that wood in a brandy-like sense. And we've talked about with reposados, again, the longer you age tequila, the more you leave that true agave flavor behind. You start to pick up other things, so you don't want to necessarily age it for so long that you kind of lose the agave characteristics. So that's that's another reason why you probably don't see again 10, 15, 20 year uh, tequilas. Um, as far as the barrels used in uh, Añejo tequila production, um, most of them are used bourbon barrels. Uh, Jack Daniel barrels I believe are the most popular still to this day. But the tequila manufacturers are starting to play around with some other barrels. Uh, French oak, used cognac barrels, used sherry barrels. Uh, even some wine barrels from, from the neighbors up north in California. Um, some distilleries are starting to play around with scotch barrels because they believe it gives the uh, finished product a, a drier finish. Uh, it may bring some balance as far as sweet and dry uh, to the product. Um, something new that the tequila people are doing and something that's been done in the bourbon industry for a little while is they've gone to smaller barrels instead of bigger barrels. Tate's have gone to smaller barrels. Uh, I believe we talked about in the Reposado video 
Uh, the standard barrel for aging tequila is 200 liters. I think the max size will let you go 600 liters. Uh, 200 liters, the standard 55 gallon barrel that you would see at a Jack Daniels distiller or any other distillery. Anyway, some of the producers are going with smaller barrels because it allows for greater control when aging. And also, too, those barrels tend to speed up the aging process. More of that tequila inside is in contact with more of the world, world, world wood. Ugh, excuse me. Uh, in contact with more of the wood than in those big barrels. So they're playing around with those. Uh, something tequila manufacturers are also doing now that again is popular in the whiskey industry is single barrel uh, products. Um, when you do a generic bottling, let's say just a basic tequila or a basic bourbon, you may have 10 to 20 of those barrels in a batch. And you may take barrels from up top, down below, in the middle of the warehouse, because they all age at different rates in that warehouse due to temperature fluctuations. And so you want to take wine from different parts, blend it together, and then you kind of have a consistent flavor. Well, single barrels kind of throw that out the window because each barrel has its own unique experience in the barrel house. And so that, that tequila in that bottle is just from that one barrel. So you may be from up top in the barrel house where it's really hot and that barrel's really expanded and breathed and whatever, and you're going to get different tequila than something that comes from that barrel that was in the bottom of the warehouse which is a little cooler what have you so that's something uh, the tequila people are starting to do um, real quick let's talk about what actually happens in the barrel there's four main things that happen in that barrel that create the flavors that, that we end up uh, enjoy drinking uh, first is um, a decrease in fusel oils that get kind of filtered out by the wood now you may ask, what's fusel oils? Uh, when distillation happens, we're, you know, people just think, well, we just distill and it's alcohol. Well, it's not just alcohol. It's actually very alcohol variants. First, there's the methanol that's bad. We want to throw that out. Then there's the ethanol that we like. But even while that ethanol is being distilled, there's, there's sub-alcohols, like something may distill at 168.7. And another alcohol may distill at 170.2, and that process is going along. Uh, later on in the process, you get what's called fusel oils in there. Uh, fusel oils are used in the production of lacquer, like if you're lacquering a wood table. Uh, not enough <laughs> amounts in the spirit that would hurt you, but again, it's something that doesn't help with flavor, and wood aging helps filter that out. Um, second, we have, uh, because of we're using a high proof spirit. Uh, we're extracting flavors out of the wood. Um, people have used alcohol as a cleaning solvent because again it will extract the stains or whatever. Well in this case it's extracting those flavors and chemical compounds out of the wood. Uh, third thing that happens in the barrel is again tequila in any alcohol that we age or whatever, again there's no tequila atom or tequila molecule. There's various chemical compounds in tequila and they're always interacting with each other. And then when we put in the wood barrel those chemical compounds are now interacting with that wood barrel and they're creating new flavors and and different components and things that we pick up um, that just tequila just in a vacuum in a stainless steel vacuum or whatever one necessarily produce. Um, last but not least is oxidation. Um, even if you fill the barrel full, that barrel will start to breathe, you'll get a little evaporation, you'll get a little oxygen, you'll get a little air that, in that barrel. Now oxidation is bad for wine, beer, mead, cider, whatever. Um, most of the time it will ruin those products. But because we're dealing with a high proof spirit, oxidation doesn't ruin the spirit. Uh, again, it, it provides another layer of chemical reactions that bring about different flavors um, besides oxidizing the tequila it also oxidizes the wood which again adds more chemical reactions that create this wonderful thing we call uh, tequila. Speaking of tequila the particular one we're going to try today is Don Julio Añejo 80 proof 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, this particular tequila has been aged 18 months in American oak. Um, the, the distiller itself 
was opened in 1942, which happens to be the name of their probably their most popular tequila, Don Julio 1942. It's that tall bottle that you see at the clubs. All right, so let's give this a try. All right, color-wise, it's not that dark. It's a gold, light gold or straw color. I'm going to give it more of a gold. Um, definitely, definitely more mellow nose than the Blanco and even the Reposado. Um, get a hint of sweetness on the nose. Let's give it a try. Oh, that's nice. A lot smoother, a little softer in the palate, more of a sweet punch. Um, I do pick up some of those barrel notes, uh, a little caramel, maybe a slight toffee. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm just labeling that. Maybe, maybe more caramel and toffee, a little honeyed. Um, definitely more mellow, though. Um, again, that aging is really smooth this out nice this is a nice sipper uh, I mean I get the alcohol burn but this is not one of those things where I just slam and go woo you know like a regular cheap tequila shot or a Blanco shot or whatever this is something I can definitely sip yeah really nice um, I get enough of the agave the wood has helped smooth it out. I pick up some wood notes, but this is not wood dominant. I don't feel like I'm chewing on Oak Stave. I don't feel like I'm drinking brandy. Um, this is still tequila to me. So overall, really nice. Smoothed out, has maintained its tequila nature, but I have more complexity to it. Um, yeah, overall, real nice, smooth tequila. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.